This video is made for adult collectors because Sunstreaker has a lot of sun on him. So concept So the concept series is continuing its bumblebee trend by giving us a couple of cut characters from the opening. Yes, there is concept art. Evan, the designer, stated on the stream that there are a couple of cut characters from the opening of the bumblebee sequence and Sunstreaker was one of them. Will we see that art? Maybe. It depends on whether him or Sam want to show us. Like, there's always tons of concept art from films that doesn't actually become public so we don't see it. Now that I got that out of the way, Sunstreaker is interesting. He looks basic, he's very yellow with some bits of gunmetal orange and silver but like, that's a lot of yellow. I really like the shade they used on the five pack but then the problem is that the orange would look strange because it's five pack Sunstreaker and he has some orange in that yellow so I guess this just the best they could do with the colors given so I'm more okay with it but it is very difficult for me to actually film this color. I've had to change so many different settings on my camera and it still doesn't look right. I do dig the design though. The big shoulders and the armored look of the limbs is nice. And the chest can open so you can like shove a matrix in there, I guess. I don't know. The back of his arms are hollow and normally I don't really care but this and Sideswipe came out in the same wave and they did a pretty good job at least attempting to fill the gaps on Sideswipe. So it missing here is a bit strange, but I really like how solid he feels. Just like Shockwave, nothing feels loose, everything is nice and sturdy. It looks like at first glance that it might be on like the thin side, but it doesn't feel that way at all. I really do like the way the legs work. The silver little greebles on the front look a little like G-axis. It's kind of neat. And there are those Bumblebee model feet. You can tell that if this was going to actually be in the film, it was just going to be another reused Bumblebee model like Brawn and shit. He does come with two guns, which look okay in his hands, but they have an alternate set of placements, which I think is cool. You can peg them into the shoulders to give him shoulder guns, or... What I do is peg them together and then put them on his back. I like the way this looks a lot because it kind of matches the G1 Sunstreaker with the thing on the back of it. And you can flip it over his shoulder to give him like mortar cannons. That's kind of neat. I wish they were blast effect compatible, but hey, at least this looks cool. He does mostly fit into a Bumblebee Cybertron display, but I feel his colors are a bit bright next to a lot of them. Next to like Brawn and some of the cons, his colors... They're really vibrant. It's like Thundercracker, but a bit more. I do very much like the head sculpt. It's small and sits a bit forward, but it is pretty nifty. I love the silver and the yellow ears. Now his articulation is cool. It just does present a couple of problems. One of which is just like, oh, something's limited. One of them is the, the toy eating itself, kind of. So it, it's, he's got a ball joint at the head. You can look up is it a ball joint yeah it's a ball joint you can look up and down a little bit but not like a lot you can't really tilt but it can rotate it is just kind of hard to, to grip it in here with the shoulder pads so you can just move them out of the way and now you have full access to the head uh the shoulder pads as you can see they can move he does have trigger happy hot rod shoulders so they can go out that far but it covers his face they can rotate but when they're up and they start rotating like this it can become a little bit awkward to do, especially with the shoulders. Like these just sort of stop them there unless you fold them out and then they go all the way. But now he's got an eye patch on because of his shoulder pad. I do wish they could shift down a little bit more this way to get out of the way, but I don't know how they would have done that with the wheel being here. They would have to entirely re-engineered the whole arm and I don't think that would have worked. So it's pain, but eh, whatever. You do have 90 degrees of bend at the elbow, bicep rotation. Nothing at the wrist due to this whole hinge assembly being here. Oops. He does have a waist joint to a full 360. And now here's where the big problem I have comes into play. You see his hips right here? You notice how they're being eaten right here and here? The paints come off, the plastic slightly gummed up. That's because they hit up here. Especially when you're rotating the thigh and uh-oh. And when you're transforming it, they have to go here and then they go up. So who knows what's happening in there because you can't see it. But as you can as you can see there, it's sort of gummed up the plastic and chipped the paint off. Like it's rough now. So that's a bit unfortunate. That is something you're going to have to be careful with is that if you do move the hips around this section, you will start to sort of shred the upper thigh a little bit. But the legs can go forward that far. They can go back that far. They can go out all the way. You do have thigh rotation on a nice double mushroom peg. 
you do have a 90 degree bend at the knee and then the ankles they can go down a little bit they can go up all the way and you have a really nice ankle pivot so he is pretty poseable it's just slightly awkward to do a few things especially with those legs they kind of scare me a little bit now i mean i've probably gummed them up as much as they're going to be gummed up so i don't really need to worry but yeah when you first get this thing that is something you're going to want to watch out for because it does it does happen but he's still pretty pretty fine to pose it's just these that get in the way these shoulder pads see now it looks like he's just wearing a big hood so yeah, flaws and all, I do really like this robot. The only really big problems I have are the shoulders and the, the hips, honestly. Everything else is just personal nitpicks. Now, yellow car. Now, the transformation on this is wild. And it's not wild in the sense of, like, sideswipe, where you're not expecting it to be that complex but neat. It's wild because it's a movie toy that's as simple as this or this. Like, it's really, really nice to flip back and forth that I keep doing it. So I'm going to remove the guns. Come on, guns. Ah, there we go. And there's like so many different satisfying things that this does. We're gonna start with the legs. So you're gonna wanna make sure the feet are straight and then fold them up, rotate them inward, bring these sections around and in and peg them into place like that. Bring these around and peg them into place. And then they peg together like so. And that's the front of the car, that's it. Then you wanna take the arms and we're going to just bring these up for now. We're going to unfold this entire assembly here and then straighten out the arm and it'll just sort of peg into the, the bicep there. So you just do the same on the other side like that. I don't know what that accent was. Then, <laughs> oh man, I'm an idiot. Then you take this entire assembly here at the chest and pull it all the way out. I love how this just sort of hides away and collapses into the body. I think that's so nice to do. But you bring this out and you rotate these clear plastic sections over. And when I say that, you're probably like, oh no, clear plastic hinges. They're not pinned. Thankfully, they did not pin these. These are all friction. They're all friction. So not only will they pop out if they caught, if you're too much stress is on them, they're not gonna shatter because there's no pin through it. So I'm, I'm okay with that. But you take this and you bring it all the way up and you fold it and peg it into the front of the car here. And then you fold the head in. And another satisfying thing is this back section folds up and just hugs everything. That's just fun. And then these little, you see these little notches right here? These little things, they're gonna go under the windshield. So you wanna get that under first and then bring the whole arm in and it will just sort of slot into the side on this little peg right there. So again, under and in and, and in like that. They will also peg in up here. There are these little tabs that are, you can kind of see sticking out that go into the shoulders. Whoops, don't rotate the bicep. That's not what you want to do. But once you get all that situated, then you take this section right here at the back, fold this up and fold that up and that's it. There's your Lamborghini Sesto Elemento looking thing. And then you take the guns and they have the two pegs that you peg them into the top here and there you have it. Okay, that's a nice ass car mode. Lamborghini Sesto Elemento looking ass. It's very nice to look at and to hold. It feels very well built. Nothing wants to come off. The color matching is, well, it's mostly good. You can tell the windshield is a slightly different shade of yellow, but given how Earthrise Sunstreaker was, this isn't nearly as bad. It's noticeable, but not at first glance. It's also on clear blue, dark blue, so it's gonna be a bit different. I like how the guns like form the engine blower looking thing on the roof, just like the G1 toy. And I also just, I also adore the way this is shaped from the swooping slopes on the front to the flat position of like the bits on the side to the swooping on the back end of the car again with like a Pagani Zonda style driver's cabin and the wheels. I like these so much. They're like the iRobot Audi. They look like hover wheel thingies and inside are clear blue portions to actually touch the ground and roll, but they're clear to make it look like it's hovering. And the cool part is that when he rolls, the rims slash fan blade portion things on the outside spin and because it's one solid piece. That's a very cool effect. It's so simple, but I love what it pulls off. Yeah, the, the car mode's the highlight for this figure, but as a whole, it's pretty damn fun. I Do I think it's worth the full price though? Eh. I mean, the 10% off GameStop price or like the five bucks off Target price, yes, absolutely. But full price? I'm not sure if there is $37 Canadian worth of play value in here. Even though I genuinely like it more than I thought I would, it's a strange thing at the end of the day and very much boils down to personal preference. 
But that's my look at Gamer, not Gamer. This is not Gamer Edition, God damn it. Bumblebee Movie Concept Sunstreaker. There we go. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time. Bye bye He does look like Gamer Edition, even with those toy hacks.